We literally had to pay rent £3,800 and we've got no tenants, zero tenants in the property. None at all. What's good YouTube, we're back. This one is as real as it gets. Rent to rent nearly made us bankrupt. So we started learning about property a couple years ago and we came across the rent to rent strategy. So we basically sold the dream, told you know, you can get into property really easily with hardly any money, that sort of stuff. Make good cash flow, low money down, which is true to a certain extent, but it is easier said than done. So whenever we get an idea or we, we're setting our head that we're gonna do something, we just go for it, we just go all out and we just don't stop until we, you know, we just, we get the idea and we just go for it. The way we see it is the longer that you wait to do your idea, the more you'll fill your brain with doubt and talk yourself out of doing it, or you just spend too much time thinking about it, trying to plan it perfectly, and then you just miss an opportunity. So we saw rent to rent as a very good way to get experience in property and obviously to make money at the same time without having to put a lot of money in. So fast forward with some graft and some learning and some mistakes, we ended up picking up the keys to our first property deal was about a year ago. What well, a start of 2020, January 2020, we picked up the keys to our first property deal. Things were going well. We started calling agents and within eight days of calling agents, we had two offers accepted on, on two properties. So if you want to see the full vlog of that, it'll be up there. So the deals that we got accepted were two HMO properties right next door to each other. It was 15 rooms in total, but the deal was to get at the rents that we wanted we needed to take both of the properties on at the same time. So we're gonna give you a little rundown of the numbers. One of the properties was a seven bed, and that was for 1,700 to the landlord. And the other one was an eight bed, and we agreed 2,100 pounds to the landlord. So in total, for rent, that's 3,800 pounds per month for both the properties. And you gotta think about bills, so it counts tax, Wi-Fi, gas, electric, water, getting a cleaner, all those sorts of expenses on top. Yeah, so what we worked out is roughly it's about £400 per property for the bills, everything included. So we worked out after doing our due diligence that we could achieve £475 per month per room. So 475 times 15 is £7,125 per month. And those are just average numbers. So some rooms are going for 450, some of them are going for 525, but it's the average is out about 475. So we do 7,125, take away 3,800 in rent, take away 800 pounds in bills, and we're left with £2,525 per month profit. That's very nice numbers, £1,000 plus cash flow each month per property. It looks great, especially on paper. So it's two and a half grand a month altogether if, you know, if all goes well. And it's fully tenanted and there's no issue whatsoever. But did it go well? So we're about to find out. That's the question. So first of all, our biggest mistake that we made of that one is we massively underestimated how much work it would actually take to get the properties ready for the tenants. Yeah. So much work to do. Yeah, the properties had, uh, like you said, a lot of work that needed doing. Uh, all of the walls needed painting, several coats on all of them. All of the skirting boards needed a good few coats uh, of paint. We had to put feature walls, um, a couple coats of, of the feature wall paint in each of the rooms. That's 15 rooms in total. Um, every single bit of furniture in there needed replacing. There was not one bit of furniture that we could keep. Um, yeah, there was, there was a whole lot of work that needed doing. We needed new sofas, dining tables, chairs, beds, wardrobes, bedside tables. Everything just needed, needed redoing. So we actually vlogged the whole thing. So of dressing up the properties, when we took on the deal, what we had to do in order to get the properties ready. And you can see in the videos that like, you could tell that we just massively underestimated it. Like it just wasn't as quick as simple as we thought. For example, we didn't budget in for people to help us with the work or anything. We literally had to just ask friends and family, just like, just bribe them pretty much. Just come, 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 come help us. So yeah, we ended up getting a crack team of boys to come and help us. <laughs> yeah, just paid for their lunch and stuff. And then yeah. worked for us all day. So if you're watching for this, big up for the help. Thank you. So the rent free period for the property deals originally was one month. But if you go back and watch our vlogs, you'll see that the negotiation on the contracts just took so long. It took like five weeks, I think it was, to actually um, you know, get, get the contracts that we wanted and that we're happy with. 
just bear that in mind. We, we met, started making calls. We got a deal accepted in eight days from making calls. And then five weeks of long negotiating, going back and forth between agents, legal guys, landlord. Just It was just long. Yeah. So th to, to get the deal across the line, we ended up having to shorten the rent free period from 30 days to 14 days. Yeah. Which gave us even more pressure to get all this work done. Yeah, so also there was, uh, over the time when we was negotiating of the contracts, there was the Christmas period and the New Year period. So then that also added to the time. So by the time we actually uh, had to sign for the contracts, we had we had no choice really to get the deal. Uh, we had to agree on a two week rent free period. That's why in the other videos that when we was getting the property ready, you can see us, we're just staying there we're working like literally like 18 hours a day, 20 hours a day, just sleeping on the sofa there. Just like, just we had to get it done because there was, we had to pay rent within 14 days. And rent, as you know, is 3,800 pounds. Then we got to pay the rest on top of that. And at the time we didn't even have a tenant. So we literally got 15 empty rooms and a house that cannot be tenanted yet because it's just a mess. Like So this meant that we had two weeks to complete the work and then get tenants in so that we can use the, the money the tenants give us to pay the first month's rent to the landlord, which was £3,800. So we was doing the work, we was staying at the property, like you said, trying to get it all done as quick as possible, but the two week rent free period was up and it was time to pay the first month's rent, £3,800, and we still had zero tenants and we're still finishing up the first property. All right, so we picked up the keys, we started cracking on straight away, started smashing all of the work out, um, like you said, working 18 to 20 hours a day, staying at the property, um, just really trying to get it all done. Two weeks went by. And... Quicker than you could ever imagine <laughs> the past two weeks of your life. Yeah. So the, the two weeks went by and it was the rent day. We had to pay £3,800 and guess how many tenants we had? Zero. So that's not great. So we're just thinking like, right, well now we've got to like, if we, if we didn't have access to other funds to, to pay that at the time. Bankrupt, we finished. Yeah, so business firstly, is over in the first month. So that's a big lesson there. You know, you, you wanna make sure that you've gone around the whole property and made sure you know exactly what the work that needs doing. Like, cause otherwise <laughs> you're literally not gonna be able to pay the rent. We literally had to pay rent 3,800 pounds and we've got no tenants, zero tenants in the property. None at all. Firstly, if we was relying on the tenants to pay the rent for the landlord, we'd be finished. And if you can't pay the landlord rent, it's not gonna look good on your company. You're not gonna be- uh, it's Running not, for very long at all. It's not, it's not gonna look good to any other agents. Oh yeah, we've got a, prof a couple property deals. Oh, how are they going? Well, we've got no tenants, we can't pay rent. <laughs> you're not going to get any more deals. We didn't have any backup money or um, if we didn't have another company that could help us, then we would be, we'll be finished. Uh, obviously we could have borrowed money or, you know, find someone to, to lend us some money and then we'll pay it back, but it's not good, you know. So if you know us personally, or you, you, you know a bit more about us, you know that we have other companies that we run as well, as well as Rent to Rent, which luckily we were able to use the money from the, another company that we run to help pay the rent for the first month's rent. If we didn't have that, then it's likely we'd be finished. If we were just working a job doing our rent to rent, um, or we didn't have some money saved, then that could have finished us. Guys, don't call me on Facebook. I'm not, I'm not, just not going to answer. <laughs> like, I don't even know you. Anyway, we finally finished the seven bed property and then we continued working on the eight bed property which was about half done by this time. So this is probably like two and a half, three weeks in. That time of the year was January. So everybody knows, well, if you don't know, January, December, those sort of months are the worst months for getting tenants. It's just slow, it's very slow. So we ended up, we finally got two tenants and they ended up being nightmare tenants. They were just, very, very bad tenants. So just an example of those tenants, they're the first two people that we have in. Uh, we find out that they're smoking weed in the house. We found that out when we're doing a viewing for other people. So the first thing when they walk in a the property, they can just smell weed 
Um, you know, there's people there, loads of people there. Even though there's only two tenants, they got all of their mates around. They're all drinking in the kitchen and in the living uh, living room. Yeah, just shouting just. So the viewings that we were getting at the time, they 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 were put off just from like walking as soon as in they the walked door. through the door. Yeah, they they just put off straight like, away. Yeah, like they, they'll come around for a viewing and then they they don't even want to see half of the rooms. They they're just like, yeah, I've seen enough. You know, they just they just they're just like they, they just want to get out of it. And we're just like, oh, oh what? come come back. Please take a room. Just, just pay some rent. <laughs> just give me some rent, man. <laughs> it's getting hard out here. So we're advertising like crazy. We're printing off flyers. We're going hand and out everywhere. We're doing whatever we can to get viewings, even though it's the slowest time of the year to get viewings. So by this time, the second property was nearly completed and we're approaching the day where we've got to pay rent again. And guess what? We still just had the problem tenants. There is no... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, mate, it was... Hard, it yeah. was hard, and then we was just sort of like, oh well, at least we got this property now. This one's ready. We can get some good tenants in that one to pay us rent. And then it gets worse. It don't just stop there. See, it's it's all um, it's all about ups and downs. It's not never gonna be how exactly how you plan it. It's never gonna run perfectly. It just is what it is. We had more problems along the way. So my car broke down. Right, so my car's broken down. Broke down at like one o'clock in the morning, which is a bit annoying because I needed to go back and forth to Southampton every day. And the properties are about an hour drive away from where we live. So when we was doing up the houses, we decided just to stay there on the old sofas, just to try and get it done as quick as possible. Even when we're doing viewings for the, the property next door, we'll just be in the other one, just still doing the work in there. Yeah, I remember that very clearly because I didn't know how to use a turn on the boiler at the time. And I was, oh mate, it was just the middle of January. It was just horrible. It was, it was bad, hard times. <laughs> yeah, go back and watch the vlogs. We vlogged everything, filmed all of it. So yeah, we couldn't really travel. So once we got that second property finished, we didn't need to stay at the properties anymore. We just had to do viewings for them. So we still didn't have a car. And now we're paying for coaches and trains, whatever's quickest to do the viewing. And then a lot of times the, the person won't even turn up for a yeah, viewing. Right, we book a coach the day before to get to organize a viewing, follow up with them the next day to make sure they're still available. We get the coach, it takes like an hour, we get there, then we walk for 40 minutes from the coach station and then it's just like, they're not turning up, they're not answering the phone. It's like, all right, should we stay in Southampton for a day? Like, or should we just fucking jump off a cliff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the amount of money that we paid for coaches, trains, even lifts off our mates because that would be that was quicker when they was available yeah. i even had to borrow my mum's car borrow my mates cars you know whatever we could do at the at the time like we'll, we'll just do whatever it takes just to get it done um but yeah all of that stuff all adds up all, all them little uh expenses that you don't think about so um you know the petrol that you're spending when doing a viewing the the money you spend on coaches trains lifts stuff like that yeah so all of that all adds up especially when we've got to pay the rent, we've got to pay the bills, and we only have a couple tenants in the properties. <laughs> yeah, this is the real stuff that can happen in rent to rent, guys. If you're thinking that, oh, mate, they, they just did it all wrong. Like, wait, just, it is difficult. Okay, so the second rent day came, and yeah, we had to get our other company to pay part of the rent again, just to help, help out, because we didn't have enough tenants in there to pay the rent. So that's two months where if we didn't have our other company, we would be met, like we'll be, we'll be finished. We'd have to borrow money off people or, you know, find other ways. But, you know, these are things that can go wrong. If you don't have the backup money there or, you know, that, that could have went really downhill for us. So if you think about it, we, so we've spent, spent about 5,000 pounds to get the properties ready. Then we've spent about 4,000 pounds to pay the rent and the bills. So, that's nearly 10 grand straight away. Then we've got to get a top up from our other company to pay the, the rent again. That's that's pretty much a, just 10 grand loss, guys. So like, that's honestly what happened. Anyway, it started picking up a bit. I think it was about March time now. Ewan started picking up more. People were moving in. We managed to get rid of those bad tenants that are in there. People were coming in and it weren't smelling like weed anymore. Or there weren't like 50 people chilling in the communal areas, blaring loud music people started moving in. We ended up having 11 rooms filled out of 15. So this meant 
The rent is covered now by the tenants and the bills are covered and we're making a small profit for both of the properties. Now we're starting to rub our hands together like, all right, finally. It's, it's been worth it now. Like <laughs> all this all this stressing is gonna be start to be worth it. Yeah, 11 rooms out of 15 fields, only four to go. And then something happened. I think we all know what happened in February, March time. What this meant for us, <laughs> well, we just instantly lost a lot of tenants. We lost seven tenants. Uh, I think it was over like two days. Yeah. Uh, four yeah. of them. One Italian guy who's like, I need to go back to my country right now. Yeah. Just like, just left, like, just like paid us rent still, like a leave. A couple, couple of people, um, couple of people lost their jobs and had to move back in with their parents. And we had four contractors from up north that were living at the property and their work just stopped. Yeah, the so, work just said, you've got to go back, see you later. So that's seven rooms. So <laughs> we've gone from 11 down to four over a couple of days, just when we thought things were going oh, well, man. we're about to pay the third month rent. We've got enough now, enough tenants, and then that happens. Yeah, and then we're there, at this point, we're just like... Just... Fuck rent to rent, <laughs> yeah. not doing rent to rent no more. <laughs> we fast forward to now, the property's full, all 15 rooms are taken. And we have someone that manages it for us and we literally do no work for it whatsoever. Uh, and it gives us a nice profit each month. If we did not have our other company at the time, or we didn't have any backup money, that like we would be finished. We wouldn't be able to do rent to rent bankrupt. Yeah, and it would be very hard for us to open another company because we've had companies in the past that have been bankrupt. So, yeah. So what's our top tips or our biggest takeaways from this video? Uh, what, what do you... That, that was a question to you, Stephen. No, okay. <laughs> so the first one, the first biggest thing is you need to be educated. You need to know what you're doing, know what to look out for, know what could go wrong. So if you want to be a brain surgeon, you can't just go up and start cutting people's heads open. You, you, you literally have to do a lot of training. You have to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing. You, if you just go in there blind, so much things are going to come up that you're not going to be ready for. And it could cost you your whole business, could cost you a lot like, of money, effort and time and stress. Yeah, I don't want to say that we wasn't educated when we were doing it, because we was, but there was just some things that we overlooked, should we say, um, that we could have you know, improved on for the next time. Uh, but like we said at the start of the video, one thing about us is if we've got an idea, we choose to do it, we're going to run with it and we're going to do whatever it takes to make it work. The only way it's not going to work is if I die. So another tip, always, always, always look at everything on a property viewer and make sure you know what everything's going to cost and how long it's going to take. Make, just try and make sure you know that because when we went on our first viewing to that property, we just looked around and was like, yeah, it looks all right. Just bang it out in a couple of days. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. No, no, we massively underestimated that one. Yeah, so we massively underestimated how long everything would take. We had our numbers right, we knew how much everything was going to cost, but we just didn't factor the time in. So what we use now is a HMO property viewing checklist, and our one's very, very detailed. It's got everything on there. So you just circle it if it's there, and then you just circle it no if it's not there. And then you know, all right, you just write the property at the top, and you know, all right, so I did that viewing. This is all the details about it. And also we take a video viewing as well, so that we can refer back to that video. So if you want a copy of the HMO viewing checklist, comment below. Yeah, I can't stress enough how important the actual viewing is. So we've got a video on how to conduct property viewing uh, for rent to rent. So we'll put that out there somewhere, go back and watch that because it is so important that you do everything properly because you don't know what could happen. Another tip is don't start with like a grand or a grand and a half and think, yeah, yeah, I could literally start with this because you, you probably can. Like, you could, like our last deal that we got, all together cost us £1,700 and we're going to be making a lot of money out of that deal. But like things can go wrong, like we've got access to other funds so if, if there's no tenants or there's something really bad happens, uh, maybe we get a murderer in one of the houses, you know, they just kill all the tenants and then it's like there's a murder scene and like something really, really bad happens. <laughs> something really, really bad happens, yeah. Like that you're going to run out of money fast, like so you got to pay rent every month. Yeah, that's your deal with the landlord. You're guaranteeing him the rent. So if straight away you can't pay him the rent, it's not going to look good. It's not going to look good at all. 
And another tip as well is you need to just do whatever it takes. If you want to make it work, then do whatever it takes to make it work and have fun whilst you're doing it as well. Don't let the stress eat you alive. Oh, use mate, it, the use it to fuel you to keep going. Yeah, like the stress can literally do two things to you. It can just make you cry and leave, like, leave you shaking and not want to leave your house. <laughs> like, <laughs> or Crumble. it can make you just get that fire in your belly to just get up and keep trying. Like, just don't give up. Just keep trying. Like, Sorry as well, if you're a hater and you thought it was bankrupt, we ain't bankrupt, but I appreciate the view. Drop the little nice. comments. Drop the little uh, subscribe. Anyway, what sort of videos do you want to see next from us? Comment below and we'll be making those for you. Yeah. So you're...